you know, a couple months after I mentioned um, drawing a scriptless manga. I really should stop calling it that because uh, it sounds like I'm saying something else. Um, yeah, it's been a couple months since I decided I was going to work on my own, uh, create our own manga for the first time without writing down a script and, um, you know, laying it out ahead of time. I still don't have layouts. Um, so how I'm doing it right now is I, you know, have the piece of paper in front of me and, uh, I write down the things that are going to happen, you know, on these sketches that I've done. Uh, so it's been, um, it's been fly by the seat of your pants, literally, for the last few weeks. Uh, I don't feel like it's been too much pressure for me because I, you know, I still have client work that I'm I'm doing. So it's not like I'm trying to work on this book 24-7. However, that is about to change because today is March 1st and I finished all of my client work with the exception of Lady Mechanica, where that's going to be, you know, going on simulta- simultaneously as this uh, manga that I have, which is called Dragon's Glacier. Um, and I am going to start drawing the interior pages today for the most part. Uh, so I did start a couple weeks ago um, and I've gotten about 10 pages laid out except it's not going quite as fast as I'd like it to and I would have to say that a lot of it is just an overlap with my own work right now um, for clients and um, God what am I trying to say maybe I should just drink my coffee first Okay, so where was I at? Um, So it's not going as quickly as I'd like it to. And I guess going into it, I knew that was going to happen because I had a lot of client work left over. And obviously, I, I didn't write the script down. So everything feels like it's building momentum, but slowly. And because I'm so impatient, I want I want to get as much of it done as possible. And with the deadlines that I have planned, this is supposed to be done by technically the end of March or April. And needless to say, I've had like some um, trepidations about how I'm going to do this if I haven't drawn much of anything for the past, you know, month or so. That kind of stuff happens, you know. Um, And I'm so used to people handing me deadlines that at this point, now that I have to make my own deadlines, I forget that this project is supposed to take over most of my time and um, any kind of fear and insecurities I've had about doing it, I can't, I can't let that, you know, affect me too much because, because then it won't get done. And then I, I have this urge, like most people do, you know, when you're trying to do your own thing or you're starting something new to basically run back to a client and then, you know, get them to give me work. And that would defeat the purpose of why I'm doing this. So that being said, um, I felt like working on this piece right now was important to get the look and feel down for what I'm trying to do with this book. So even though I was working on client work and I really didn't have enough time devoted to drawing the interior pages, I needed to still establish how this book was going to get made and, and done, uh, in as quickly as possible and as, and as stylized the way that I want it to, you know, as possible. So that's kind of where this concept came about. Okay. So she has been masked off with um, frisket foam. So now I could go ahead and paint the dragon in the background. Now in the comic book or manga, um, the dragon is actually a very light 
color, almost translucent. So I don't know if I want to use black to color this dragon in because then that would that wouldn't be accurate to the actual character design. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to um, ink him so that he frames he frames the main character, or he. So I'm trying to figure out how to ink him so that he could frame the character who's got black in her outfit and a uh, serpent. So I'm gonna to try to get this worked out. So my workaround for um, for speed and not over rendering detail is basically knowing where to spot the ink and then where to leave the paper white basically. And that's another thing is um, doing the screen tones in, on a program is going to save me some time. So it's really just retraining my mind to look at my um, page and then not overdo it. So. That's, that's part of the challenge and that's part of what I was saying earlier in the first episode about basically growing as an artist. And so these are kind of things that even though it's like it's kind of rough to, to relearn things right now, it's also what's keeping me going is like um, the competitiveness of trying to be strategic and actually accomplishing this goal. So um, yes, I'm going to have to draw back some of the detail I'm used to putting into some of the pages and panels because of the size of the page. But I think in the long run, um, it's easy to do it that way. And then if I have to go back and draw comics, which I'm still doing with Lady Mechanica, then I could always add the detail in, which is nice because once you retrain your mind to focus on the basic shapes and the layout and the composition, the other stuff is going to be much easier to do, you know? So um, detail is uh, is cherry on top. So um that's kind of my approach to at least learning the process because obviously I'm still trying to figure it out and I've overdone it. Some of the pages have, you know, quite a bit of detail. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at. So the goal of this piece was to um, help me establish the look and feel of the book and then also to figure out strategic ways to get pages done as quickly as possible while still maintaining um, a certain level of quality that I like. And um, so that's kind of where the idea of, you know, like the, the, the harsh contrast for this piece came about. Um, because I figured if I was able to do that with this pinup piece, then the interior pages were gonna be easy. And I've already started to uh, pencil and ink a few of the earlier pages, um, like I mentioned. And so I'm still able to try things out. Um, there's a couple of things that I feel like I could probably work out a little bit better after experimenting. And, you know, like from the previous episode, I basically scrapped all the manga paper, that I, the paper that I bought because it was too thin the ink wasn't sticking to the paper like I wanted it to. So that was something that I had to work out. And so I bought um, recycled Canson paper, which is still good, except it, you know, I'm not sure the quality of the paper in the long run, like, you know, a few years from now. And um, I'm also used to using Eon boards for my comics. So I'm trying to work out a way of working on like the Eon boards for the rest of the pages. So the first seven pages or so, uh, probably 10 by the time I get the new paper, is going to be on the recycled Canson paper. So some of the obstacles I found with what I have going right now is um, because I'm not used to working on the smaller size manga paper um, or format, I should say. Usually comic books are 11 by 17. So um, I had a problem with cramming too much detail into certain panels and also, um, you know, that was a big problem because I'd, it'd go over the trim marks on the paper. And um, yes, I could do it in Photoshop where I could shrink it and make it fit. But then you see all this fine detail that may or may not work, you know, for the piece itself. And, and the, the detail is distributed in a very strange way. So I had to take a look at some of the other mangas that are out there to figure out where they placed they're gray and then the, the black and white and all the detail and stuff. So that was, um, it took a little getting used to. And I did one test page, which 
I'm still going to put in the book, but I might um, fix some of the detail and, and just wash it, wash it with like ink and stuff. So it's not overpowering or it looks like little, um, little needle marks almost, right? So that was one thing. And then I didn't actually sit at my desk and draw these, some of these pages. So I ended up using some of the brush pens like I did, um, like I used to, um, you know. And so at first it looked like it was going to work out okay. And then all of a sudden I started smudging, <laughs> smudging some of it. And there's nothing I dislike more than having to use whiteout pen or ink to get the, um, you know, to get my smudge marks off because you could do it and fix it. But just the idea that it happened, because what if it happens on a face or something? That's, that's unforgivable. And, um, it looks kind of funny. So I, uh, you know, so that's the lesson I learned about using brush pens, um, and not letting it dry. I'm not sure if it's just the paper itself that I'm using because it's, it's got like a, a coat on top of it or if it's um, just the brush pen ink itself and how it, it, there's no control over how much ink comes out. I mean, you could, you could blot it with a paper towel, but like after a few strokes, it basically does the same thing again. So there's not a, a, as much control over the, the brush and the ink as if I were to, you know, use my brush and dip it into the ink itself. So I guess whenever possible when I'm at home, I'm, you know, probably going to stick with using my awesome brushes. Um, I, I don't feel like giving up though. I, I feel like I'm being defeated by brush pens. So um, I'm probably going to try it on a nicer bristle board just to see because ideally the most ideal situation to get this book done as quickly as possible is to um, basically use a brush pen, do very soft and basic layouts and then just start inking that would be ideal so if I, I could avoid you know bringing out my ink and my brushes then I probably would love to do that however if that's not possible I'm gonna have to do what I know works because any moment that I spend slowing down and, and having to tinker around with my supplies and tools is gonna you know take away from the finished product being done on time and focusing on the things that need to be focused on. So that brings me to the, uh, the iconic things with manga, which is, you know, the screen tones. So I have, um, a pack of screen tones that I bought like a year ago or something. And it was sitting in my, my art drawer. And I thought maybe just, just for this piece, just to add the, um, deleter screen tones on the page itself instead of, you know, doing it in uh, Clip Studio, which is what I've decided to do um, because of, of course, speed, and that's how everybody else does it right now. The The one challenge that I have with that is um, deciding where I should be inking instead of, um, because what I normally do is I ink the textures, uh, the shade, whatever I want as a shade, I ink, I ink that in and I fit it in and I cross hatch and stuff, but um, of course, that takes more time, so I'm retraining myself on how to um, to ink it without having to add all that extra texture and stuff, so that I could do it in post, you know, digitally, because that would save me time, and then the look would be more consistent. And um, so, yeah, that that's basically the challenge: is also trying to figure out not to over ink and only ink spots that I feel like need to be inked on the paper and then leave the rest for post because that streamlines it. And of course it looks consistent and it's going to look cool because that's the iconic look, you know, I'm trying to go for is the screen tones and I could just buy them, you know, a bunch of uh, screen tones. But the problem with that is getting the right, the same screen tones that are going to work consistently in, the 180 to 200 pages that, that this book is going to require. So um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to purchase that many screen tones, not to mention it's definitely going to slow me down. Um, so I probably shouldn't do that. I, I might still do traditional screen tones just for the pinup pieces and the cover pieces, but I think interior page wise, it's probably just going to be um, the Clip Studio and the Procreate uh, screen tones that I purchased online. So which is really nice because um, 
you get to do so much with it. And that at the end, I of the at the end of the day, the way that the book looks should speak for itself. And um, I, you know, I could I could be proud of myself and happy that I inked most of it and did everything that I could on paper. But there's nothing wrong with being able to do the digital afterwards. Um, yeah, I got I got nothing to prove, I guess. But um, yeah, so this piece was a lot of fun to do because it helped me establish uh, some of the things that I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do, um, mainly the dragon that's supposed to be more like ice or crystal, so it's kind of translucent, so that was kind of fun to um, render for this piece, and um, basically this character right here, which is kind of a, there's a radiance about her, but she's also, there's some something mysterious and dark, so that's kind of the look and feel I was going for. Um, so I'm excited to share this story with you. And um, my next up and biggest challenge is trying to do two to three pages a day because at this point, that's how the deadline's gonna look. And, um, and I'm gonna film it, I think, the whole day to see how far I get. Maybe I get half a page done, maybe I get, you know, three pages done, that would be amazing. Or maybe it's going to be two pages one day and then five pages another day. I mean, I'm dreaming, obviously, because um, because that's how that's how we get things done. Is we um, we're a lot more optimistic about our abilities and skills than um, than reality sometimes. Which you kind of need that when there's so many obstacles and so many things to figure out and. You know, you just never know sometimes. So um, thanks as always for hanging out with me. And I will see you guys in the next episode where I will faceplant while trying to draw interior pages. See ya.